Hey, Denise, it's Mike. How are you? Okay, You're on speakerphone. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. I think we okay. can All right. turn you up here too somehow. I'll find a button. The round silver button? The round, the round yeah, the button. on the bottom right, the round, yeah. as it goes here now, so. All right, well, it's 6.30, we'll call to order the April 8th meeting of the Rollinsford Select Board. First order of business is the approval of the minutes of the 25th of March and April 1st. Folks have a chance to review them. Yep. Denise, did you have any corrections or additions? No, not that. Uh, and Miles? Yep, I'm good. So by consensus, we will adopt and three the input. Yes. Okay, come on up. Uh, so you have April Washington Street. I'm here on behalf of the Rollinsford PTO. We have a new set of officers that took um, positions in October or November. But we um, had several discussions about connecting with the town to create a broader um, outreach. And we're, in the vi we're redoing our vision statement at the moment to include community outreach. So we wanted to approach this board and see if we could um, collaborate with you in getting the PTO events on the town calendar and through email blast if you would have any issues with that. Uh, not that I can think of immediately. Yeah. Um, hold on, please hang on just a second. Does the, uh, I should know this, uh, someone was a child in the school, but I can't think of it at the moment. The school does this too, doesn't they? Don't they? Yeah. And emails? Um, the PTO has their own Facebook page, uh -huh. and some of the events do end up on the um, newsletter from the principal. Yeah. But we are looking into um, expanding it to involve the whole community, so okay. like the kids can go to their neighbors and know who their neighbors are, okay. and create a better just um, sense of community. We are looking at maybe doing a veterans breakfast come fall, uh -huh. and we will reach out to the Legion for that. Sure. Okay. We want to do a pie sale, and we want to look at involving the whole community and not just... Gotcha. Okay. And th there are people in the community that um, homeschool their kids or send them to private school who don't have access to the information. Fair enough. Miles? I'm, I'm looking at the phone today. Miles Denise? It's turning off. Sorry. It's turning off? Yeah, it's just all yeah, power off. Did you, have any, did, you, did you have any comments or questions? No, I'm having a hard time hearing them. Oh, okay. So, did you hear what Celia said? She want, she was here representing the PTO and is interested to see if we could potentially sure. put some of their events, send it out vers via the um, town um, email distribution list and um, calendar. Okay. As long as we don't overload Tia. That was, that was my comment. I mean, they have their own means by going to the school um, sites, but, but I mean, I'm okay with it as long as it doesn't overload Tia. Because sometimes she has a lot to post. How many communications are we thinking, just the ones you mentioned? Um, at right now, it's once a month, it may be twice a month, if we have a special event. So, I would be concerned about overloading people's email. email. So, maybe just special events then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And those, right now, are happening on a like quarterly basis. Okay. I would say maybe special events that... Um, include more than just the kids, you know, yeah, yeah. if you're trying to bring the public or the residents of town in. Yeah, I think that, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. So, Miles? Yeah, yeah, no, that makes, that makes yes. sense. Yep. All right. Thank you. Is that that? That's it. That's one of the more simple oh. things we'll do with that. Oh. One question. Um, the email that went out looking for volunteers for Tree Warden and Parks and Rec, yep. there were no descriptions with them. Mm -hmm. Where do we find descriptions of those positions? Is there descriptions? I've, I've heard that there are RSAs now, like, floating around social media, but otherwise, um, no, there are no descriptions because they're dictated by RSA. So, that being said, yes, I was eager to get the message out, and there are no descriptions. Also, because we haven't, they haven't had a strong role here, necessarily, to give examples of how they've been 
really helpful in the past, but it would be great if people took some ownership and did more with them. So um, I'll see if I can follow up and make sure that we can um, maybe reference the other space for people. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay. Yep, uh, I'm just here to get a signature for that race that we do. Uh, this, this self, um, people already sent a letter to the Conservation Committee on the 4th. Yep. So I just need, so this, the state just needs uh, a signature for, because we use Bicentennial Park. So that's basically what I, the only guy I need. Okay. Come on. Okay, so Denise, you probably could not hear that. So a uh, gentleman here from um, 603. Endurance. Endurance, sorry. I'm trying to, I knew the 603 part. Uh, they run a, a road race in town. Um, oh, yeah. Or they have in the past. Um, and they use part of those um, town's property, the Scotland property. Right. And, and Bicentennial yeah. Park. So um, the Southeast Land Trust holds the, um, the easement for um, the, the portion of, um, of uh, the Scotland area that they use. So we need to get their sign off as part of the agree part of the agreement that, of, of self holding this easement. I guess we didn't know this in the past, so we, we want to make sure we're honoring that agreement. And they've signed off on it. So now um, the select board just has to sign off on the um, uh, application with the liquor commission. I'm assuming you're okay, alcohol. We did have some issues last last year, right? Is this the same group? Yes, we addressed that um, last, we, week. last week. I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Was it just last week. Yep. Did Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, did you still have concerns, or? Nope. Okay. Nope. As long as it's been addressed and it won't happen again, okay. we're good. Miles. Yep. I'm good. Okay. Chief, um, they're serving alcohol, I guess. Do you have any objections? Is it being served down in the park? Yep. Was it served in the park last year? Yep. Were there any problems last year, Chief? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do we have any objections to me signing off on the, the one-day liquor license then? Chief, do you still want the policy the, the, the policy to go to you, or do you want it to go to you? Why are they serving alcohol? They give them a beer at the end of the race. Oh, okay. That's what, how I would run the race, too. Like <laughs> <laughs> your first. Yeah, that might want to go out to Carolina. I have to have one first. We have a one million dollar insurance policy, and it's just always gone to him because Susan just signed it and didn't do anything. So I just always sent him the policy. Do you want them? I would take the policy. Okay, cool. Okay. And they're also discussing that the, there's an insurance policy that they'll, they'll give the town. And that because the insurance policy states that there's going to be alcohol there as well? Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. No chance. Any objections? All right. So I'm going to sign off on the... Um... I had my glasses. Okay. What is the official name of this word? It's called Dixon's Revenge. So when we were coming up with it, so how it started is uh, Silas from the from the cidery wanted the, us to come in and put it on our race, and so we started digging around with the, the history of the town. And there was a back in the 1800s, there was a, a guy that left the mill building, traveled over to Berwick, ended up killing somebody, and then and then stashed out in a bar or a pub in Rollinsford, New Hampshire. So we ended up calling it Jason's Revenge. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Yep. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Charlie, you're up. Uh, okay, Charlie Down, Wallens Road. I just have one question. How's the staffing on Team Raleigh and uh, su and Team Ra and Summer Camp and Team Raleigh? Uh, let me ask. Do you know what the staffing situation is? Not yet. We're having a rec committee meeting tomorrow night, so we'll get an update. The first priority was to hire a director, um, and then that person would have a say in some of the other positions. I believe the rec committee was also going to hire the, the team camp director. So, no, I don't have any updates about, you know, whether or not they have somebody that they're have interested they hired in. they a director yet? Yeah. Well, you got that information tomorrow night. Um, it, whether or not they have one, I'll, I'll know that tomorrow night. Cool. I don't, you know, so far I don't believe they do. Okay. So we'll have an update for next week, I guess. What was the question? If the, how the staffing is coming along for the summer rec program. Okay. Any other opinion input? All right, seeing none, we're going to get some department head business. Chief, come on up. One purchase order. 
number 1577 to AAA Police Supply for ammunition. Um, we're looking to send the new guy to Academy next month. He needs to bring a couple thousand rounds with him, plus uh, to stock up our, uh, our, our supply. So looking to get six cases of 40 S&W Blazer, that's practice ammunition, two cases of 12 gauge shotgun, four cases of 55 full metal jacket rifle ammunition, and one case of 40 S&W Gold Dot Hollow Point, which is our duty ammunition, for a grand total of $2,674. We have 3,200 in that line item. Okay, I'll move purchase order 1577 to AAA Police Supply in the amount of $2,674 for ammunition. Second. Any discussion? I right, purchase order 1577 is removed and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And I understand that Officer Hancock popped in uh, last Monday for a short visit and kind of prepped you on a grant that he was looking to do and participate in. Well, we have the paperwork here. Um, and it's basically, uh, he's one of three people, I guess, that are on the SWAT team that are looking to go to this breaching uh, technique uh, and get certified for all these breaching techniques. So, the grand cost of the grant. The state and federal portion is three thousand seventy-nine dollars, and the town may be uh, the town portion may be up to two hundred thirty-five dollars and thirty-six cents, according to Officer Hancock. The three thousand takes care of the tuition, uh, six nights of the best western in, uh, in New Jersey, as well as his meals. The two thirty-five thirty-six might be possible overtime for him because it's a six-day six course, and. Um, and he works 40 hours a week, so, so maybe eight hours of overtime. Okay. So we're looking to get the, the select board to authorize us to apply for the grant. And uh, we have a spot here for Caroline to sign, to sign as the financial officer, a spot here for uh, Mike to sign as chair, and on this page as well, to sign. And have, uh, any discussion from the board? Denise? No. Okay. Miles? Uh, I'm just curious how, how valuable you view this training for him? Well, I think that is extremely valuable. Um, you know, fortunately, we haven't needed to use the SWAT team over here in quite some time. I should never. Um, however, they have gone to, you know, Farmington to with some little broadcaster, yeah. Lee, and, and whatnot. Um, you know, when I say, well, this type of training here, it, uh, it, it's one more tool in their basket because mm -hmm. it's it's an explosive type uh, breaching as opposed to using a battering ram. So right. it's actually safer for the team to use this as opposed to going manually trying to knock down the door. Right. So, so, so the maximum the town may be on the hook for is $230 and change. Well, $235. Yes. Rather modest investment, I would say. It, yeah. No, no, one of the training of one of our officers. So is there any objection to... Be signing this. Uh, when we have a motion, we can. Sure. Uh, I'll make a motion that we authorize um, the. Uh, what, what did you call Officer it? Hancock. Uh, Officer Hancock, but what is the breachment training? To attend the breach training, yes. Breach training. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed? All right. So, so hearing it. Um, Chief, is this to be paid out of? the training line and then reimbursed, or do you want this in you want to reimburse back this will come out with a FEMA, FEMA Homeland Security reimbursement line. Okay. Right. Except the overtime. The overtime will come out. Yeah. Okay. He said it was pretty soon. It was like the end. May. Oh, May. Yeah. That's pretty soon. May 19th to the 24th. In beautiful New Jersey. <laughs> <Adam. laughs> uh, depending on your schedule, I'd like to schedule the, uh, the swearing in and the badge presentation to the personnel attack on the 29th of this month. Of this month. The following week, I should be going to the academy. What time is Eversource coming in, do we know? 
Um, George was arranging that, so I believe 6.30, but I can well, confirm that, yeah. that with him. So I would say schedule this for a time that works, and we'll tell you. Right, that's what I was going to say. We're going to do you yeah. and then just, if we had a set time, then what's best for you? Whatever works for you. Want to get done first thing right after the public, uh, public input? Sure. So we do 6.30 on... Um, Thank you. Yeah, That's all that I have for you. Okay. Um, we were going to discuss the salaries tonight. Um, it's my understanding that a non-public personnel issue you got to discuss with Miles and I. You want to discuss with Denise before we take it up. This is not public tonight? Uh, not tonight. No, not tonight. Oh, no, it's going on. No, no, we, no, we, you and I and Miles had an opportunity to discuss something in a non-public session prior to, to this oh, meeting. In, the, in another meeting, yes. Um, Denise wasn't able to be part of that conversation. You wanted to have that conversation with her before we take it up. If I could, yes. Then I'm just going to say we're not going to take it up tonight. That's what that's on your request for sure. Yeah. Do you have anything else for the chief? No. Uh, Denise, do you have anything for him? Yeah, I'm not I'm trying my best to remember that you're there, sorry. <laughs> Just, um, I do want to do a ride-along at some point, yes. um, so I can, I can send you an email and sure. get a date and time. I don't know, like, yeah. I'm assuming you want to work out one evening. Yeah, I, that's the best time to go. At the time that um, i go see you sometime. Yeah. Well, you got work to it, I guess, so. Yeah. Um, it's a plus. Yeah. Yeah, just send me an email with you know a couple of dates of okay. availability and times and whatnot, and then make it happen. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. That's it, I guess. All right, perfect. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, so the uh, fire department may or may not be in the season, but Good in luck tomorrow. George will not be in tonight, right? Correct. Okay. We have welfare to take up? We do. Okay, I'm not going to go into non public yes. for that. Do we have a personnel issue at the very end? Um, I, I don't believe we need to do that because unless no. um, okay. unless the board feels a need, I spoke with you all individually. Okay. So do we want to um, do we want to go into non-public now to do a welfare, or do you want to wait till the end? Um, it seems easier at the end. But all right, we'll do it at the end. Okay. So we'll, we'll table this for now. All right, town administration, fire department salaries. Is that what it says? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we have not taken up the police salaries either, so we're going to table that until next week, I guess. I didn't realize that you chief wanted to discuss. Independent of what we what we may or may not be able to do there, we may or may not be able to do something here. So I would suggest we table it. Will that work with their schedule, their, their timeline, or do they have to have? Um, there's tonight? no payroll this week, so Perfect. that's fine. Payroll next week? Yes. So I guess we better right. decide for everybody then. Well. They're in the middle of a quarter. They're paid by the quarter, oh, so, so it's matter. less it's less okay. urgent for them. Okay. So is there an objection to tabling this then until we resolve the police one? I'm off that with that. Miles, I'm good. All right. So we're gonna table that then. Budget committee secretary position. We have reposted it, but I understand that um, we've heard, we've heard from one of the other applicants. Yes, and this is good, and she'll work out really well when she's available. She will not have a lot of availability at first. Okay. Um, I'm still suggesting that the board hire her because she will be a great fill-in candidate for the long term, yeah. and um, it's better than what we've got going on right now. Okay, so this, this is one of the previous applicants? That correct. Okay. And she has um, yeah, she she's a backup legal candidate office, board, so, so she, she can write. So, <laughs> so Denise, we, we had, a, obviously, you know, we had someone, we had a candidate. We yes. agreed to hire that person, and the person never showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the person that was our backup candidate is still willing to be our backup candidate, and so I think we're we're suggesting we we'll go forward with her okay. um, and keep the position posted unless it's someone else. Yes. Because we do it on a more full time basis. Does that work? Okay. Yes. Yeah. No. Is that okay with you? So there's her name if you wanted to look over the application at all, but if you could give her name down to Solomon. Oh, yeah, sorry, so we need to hire the person. That's right. Um, okay, so Miles, you, I've seen this already, so yep. you can move it. All right, uh, I will move that we hire uh, Brianna Lewis uh, to fill the position of Budget Committee Secretary. Second that. Is there any discussion? Seeing that all those in favor of hiring Ms. Lewis to be the Budget Committee Secretary, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
That's taken care of. Uh, next order of business is to discuss the CIP committee. Um, we um, have done some more digging. Um, it does not look. It does not appear that um, um, that the committee can just go away. Um, that it is the um, uh, I say creation. It's under the auspices of the planning uh, board, which um, makes sense and doesn't make sense, I guess, depending but on the perspective. But can be delegated to the but select can be delegated board. to the select board, correct? Um, and seems to have been in the, at least in the immediate past. Um, in the years past, it was uh, a member of the select board, a member of the budget committee, and a member of the planning board, and and the town admin staff had been part of it as well, and I would assume would continue. Um, this past year, it was um, was a, a sort of more of an open call for. We had um, it was an open call, and two. Um, we ended up with two public members on that, in addition to a budget committee representative and a planning representative, right. and, a, and a board ex officio, too. And I would suggest moving forward, you go back to the way that it had been working, I think it worked rather, it was successful, just having a, a ex officio from the select board, planning board, and the budget committee, and, and the town administrative staff. I think you'd have you would have um, uh, a good working group that, um, that uh, is in, uh, invested in, in each of those committees um, and brings a different perspective based on their involvement with those committees. I think you can have an a, uh, informed conversation with, um, with the department heads as to what their, their needs and their goals and their long-term plans are. So that's what I would suggest for the coming budget season. Denise, you're the ex officio of the budget committee for us. What, what are your thoughts? Me? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I mean that's where we, it was uh, Kevin, was, I think that's, is he in planning? He's yes. planning, yeah. Yeah, he was on the committee, myself, and who's the other one? Bill Irving. Bill Irving from budget, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I believe it was Bill Irving. So, yeah, so we'll just have to put it out there. Who they're going to put on it. Yeah. Bill's gone. Right. So from the, well, I'm looking at myself, I guess, but I'm filling in the budget committee until you come back. So at the, at the next meeting, if, if you're not back and able to make it, I'll, I'll go again. But so we need to. I think I can come back. The 24th. Yes, I will be at that meeting. Okay. Yes, I can go back to work on that Monday. Okay. Alrighty. Then I will leave it to you to bring up to them that we need to have an appointment. To that committee uh, from that board, sure. okay. uh, committee rather, okay. and um, planning and as well. John is the chair of the bill, right? Correct. John Ordway, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll drop his email, but he's put it on the agenda. Have we had a meeting since that organizational meeting? We haven't, right? Budget? Yeah. No, it was just that okay. one. The meeting. So I have an update later in the meeting, later in the, in the, about that. Sorry, yes, John was re-elected as chair. Of the, okay. of the budget committee. So I'll give you an update when it comes at the end of the meeting. Um, okay. You go with that, Miles? Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to be the, the ex officio on that committee. But, um, By me. Yeah. Denise, did you have a. Gary, what did you say? Um, I'm happy to be the ex officio on that committee. On CIP? Yeah. You got it. Uh, unless. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, now it sounds like you really want I'll it. move that. Uh, no, we have... no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, that's fine then. I can be your backup. Okay. I'll move that we appoint Miles England to be a rep on the CIP committee. I second that. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. You're on the CIP committee. Thank you, Miles. Congratulations. Um, all right. Eversource is coming out on the 29th to discuss um, LED lights. Yes. And I will, that's just a placeholder to remind us. I will reach out to them and make sure it's a time that doesn't conflict now Perfect. with your other engagement. Coming at 7, maybe? I didn't see. I didn't look up. Sorry. That's fine. I'm so focused. But I don't have my glasses. So I'm so focused on trying to see the page. I didn't see you come in. Sorry. Here's okay. All right. So Mark's here. Uh, Denise, this is your. Okay. Oh, goody. Awesome. Awesome. Thank Report you. Report for the engine. Yep. This is a copy of a reimbursement that has come back to sauce. It's all right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
thing. These are the ones that you, know, you would want to change your yeah, mind. I did that. Yeah. The other guy that you were yeah. there the other day and saw that, and then there's two other new folks that have all the proper information. Fantastic. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. Right. One purchase order this evening I have to present. Uh, number 1517 is to Seacoast um, Technical Assistance Response Team, which is START, which is our annual dues for uh, our hazmat uh, coverage. That's for $604. All right. A lot of our line item that is specific for that event and other hazmat stuff. Okay. So we're, so we're fine. I'll move purchase order uh, 1517 to Seacoast Technical Assistance Response for $604 for annual membership. I'll second that. Did you? So it's, uh, I was just going to read it back to you. So uh, Mark has brought in a purchase order for uh, his annual dues, his membership dues, to the Seacoast Technical Assistance Response Team, the Hazmat Team, and it's, it's the budget is expected. Is there any discussion? It's been 15, 17 has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye opposed? Right. To some degree, you'll, right. you'll get. You could be wasting some people's time too. I mean, 
And they just can't. Don't I mean, you know. It's a waste of everybody's time to interview right, somebody exactly. that's not going to really take it in the end. Right, exactly. Okay. Denise, are you okay with that? Up to 16? I'm having a really hard time hearing you guys. Okay, we were better off with the cell phone last year, or last week. Um, the, uh, we're using the office phone today. Um, so we, um, we were saying uh, on the ad, we would say um, up to $16 an hour for the position. We were discussing whether or not we thought it made sense to, to post a salary. Yeah. And Miles and I are of the opinion that it might make sense to actually post a dollar amount. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So we're all in agreement then. So post away. Okay. So did we have any... Any uh, anything we wanted to add to the job description besides the whole heck of a lot of stuff we want this person to do? Uh, I thought it was well written. It is. Yep. 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 All right. I'd say go for it and up Excellent. to sixteen dollars an hour. Good luck. Okay. Hopefully we find lots of people. Thank you. Mm. All right. Uh, planning training. So there is some interest by at least two members of the planning um, board for uh, for training that's put on by the governor's office of planning. Which is not called that anymore. What's it called? No, the Office of Strategic Initiatives. There. Um, so I haven't published it widely to the planning board, but I believe we'll get you know at least two or three people who are interested in um, a conference that the state office is holding. Um, the um, the fee is sixty dollars per person. So someone reached out to me from the planning board to ask if that was something we would cover. The planning board does not have its own training line, so it would come out of the executive training line. So they used to. Yeah, I thought they, I recall they used to too. But they, we also have, um, glasses. Um, we have um, the planning consultant. What is, has Mr. Krebs gone even close to his, uh, well, we canceled well, the last couple of meetings. Also, they, well, and it's not just that, but it's, um, because a big case could come up and you need him for, right, it's Jay Stevens, too, it's, it's, if there's somebody else that you need to, like, if you need to call, um, all right, so it also somebody, includes yeah. that, okay, yeah, mm. well, we just have to take out a contingency now, or well, where else are you suggesting? Um, I would suggest the expense itself would come out of executive training, which does not really have fluff in it for right. extra space to, to handle it. But I'm sure we can find the money elsewhere without specifying where, just because yeah. it's early. It's not that much money. Right. But I mean, it's important to train these people. Yeah, we did it. Uh, they're, they're new. They're really new. And, you know, I would hate to disenfranchise people who earnestly want to learn and Well, engage. that means people coming before the board deserve uh, that, that, there's to that have too. folks that know what they're talking it's, about. It's an in-person training somewhere. Yes. Um, I mean, I think we would want to make clear that we're not covering mileage or food. Right. All right, we'll cover their, their, the, red the, the registration fee, I would say. So, and I, Denise, are you okay with them offering it to the um, to the full planning board? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. sure. Said, are you both okay? Um, I can't imagine all of them would want to do it, but um, if there's more than two or three of you know want to go, it's going to be beneficial to the town of the long run. Okay, so it's I agree. Sixty dollars a person. It's not. Have you will be able to find it. Have you been to that training? No, and I'd love to go. I don't I don't recall what date and if I'm available to go, I'm I'm considering it. I'm just curious if it's the type of training that one person can go and come back and, and, and show everyone well, and train the training. Possibly it, but uh, but also they have three different workshop slots and for each of the three different workshop slots they're offering five different topics. Oh okay. Yeah. So 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 okay. there's a benefit to sending more people. Yeah, so. Right, bang for a buck, they yeah. can bring back, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're going to open it up to the entire um, planning board. Uh, will do, thank you. Okay. And there's, um, well, on that topic, the, uh, I wasn't here, I was out of state last year, but there was um, the planning board, I mean, the budget committee had a training too, didn't they? Um, they hosted the municipal association um, here for, um, Budget training. That right. video is still on the drive, okay. and that's been disseminated. That that's been made available to them. So okay. They know it's All right. Okay. Well, we could. Uh, and how much was it to have them come out? Uh, five hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Well, um, there are what three new members. Um, 
But you've already you've already forwarded that link to. Um, all right. They have it. All right. We can see if there's any interest. Um, um, maybe Denise, can you see if there's interest with the um, the the current budget committee? See if there's interest in, in, in having that training again. If there isn't, then um, at least the resources are available online that were presented okay. last year. I'll, uh, I'll but, okay. I mean, if we're doing it for the planning board, we should be doing it for the budget for you, two other things. So. Okay. I uh, just didn't make it on the agenda. All right. Uh, appointments. So the tree ward and fence viewer and uh, the, the two parks and rec positions are open until uh, the, the 19th of this month, I saw. Was the posting that went out? Um, it was brought up to our attention that we didn't post job descriptions with these because they've been um, uh, sort of honorary and, yeah, and, and ceremonial, and ceremonial, ceremonial in the last several years. So there aren't job descriptions that I'm aware of that exist in the town, but there are by statute for um, at least tree warden and parks and rec. Or? Tree warden and fence viewer. Fence viewer. I yeah. imagine parks and rec. That's just you know. I'll look okay. into it. Okay. So um, we know that we have until the 19th. Have we heard back? It, it, the thing just went out what? Recently. I, just I saw think it went out today. Today she posted? Okay. So we haven't had anyone no. clamoring to get to any on it. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll wait till the 19th to hear who signs up for it. Um, so the department had a meeting. We had a meeting on this past Friday uh, with myself, um, Caroline. Chief Rutherford, Chief um, Ducharme, and uh, George um, to discuss um, a number of things. A few of the things that came out of this, uh, there were several things that came out of this meeting. Um, uh, the, the biggest um, uh, concern, I don't want to call it a complaint because it wasn't, it wasn't a complaining meeting, it was uh, very constructive, but a lot of concern around the purchasing policy uh, was brought forward initially by uh, Chief Ducharme, but it was shared by all of the all the department heads that there's um, the, the purchase order limit is far too low. Um, and did I say that? Do you have it there? I, I readily available for me? Chief Ducharme pr uh, put together a list of all the other towns sure and what they have for um, purchase orders. And it's... Uh, I know you're going to be shocked, but Rollingsford is the lowest. But um, I also did remind everyone that um, thank you. Sorry. That's right. That um, up until several years ago, we didn't have a purchase policy in place, and that the goal of when the policy was put into place was that it would be revised, and that things like credit card limits, who gets credit cards, and um, purchase order amounts could change. It was sort of a trial especially with the credit cards, because we had never had that in the past. So Chief uh, Rollinsford's at, for purchase orders, um, Rollinsford's at 200, Middleton's at 500, Farmington's 1,000, Barrington's 2,500, Milton is 2,500, New Durham is 3,000, Lee is 5,000, Berwick, Maine is 5,000, Summersworth is 5,000, and Madbury, they don't have um, a limit, but they do have... Um, a credit card um, where um, their chief of police, I guess, has a $5,000 limit. Is that, I have that right? Um, and Stratford um, has no limit at all. You can go and buy whatever you want, apparently, without a purchase order, which I have not suggested. But um, so the chief has had, um, raised the concern that, you know, a lot of the what he comes in here for and what all the department heads come in here for are what he would characterize as small dollar amount purchase orders, which is legitimate. I mean, the one this evening wasn't all that low, it was like $2,000, I guess, some change. But, you know, it was, there are lots of evenings where he'll come in for much smaller ones yeah. and had suggested that perhaps that it's time that we, we move forward. He, he, he walked us through how it used to be $25 <laughs> per purchase order, and then we were kind of after raising it to 50 a few years back, and then or, uh, several years back, went to, and then a few years back, we went up to what, 200. So um, he's suggesting that we need to move off of that as well and go higher. Uh, he did not give a dollar amount, but again, I, he gave these examples of um, what the different communities are doing. So 
We don't have to decide tonight, but as we are going through our purchasing policy, is the department had to wish that we increase the limit on purchase orders and on the credit cards. What are what are current? What's the current? Uh, um, it's the same as purchase orders. They can spend 200. up to two hundred dollars at a time, but they also have only a thousand dollars a month, and the thousand dollars a month is problematic for for certain departments, right? Yeah. So. Um, he was also concerned about that as well, as were George and, and Chief Rutherford, too. So, um, it's something for us to think about. This is why we have these meetings, so they can bring us this sort of stuff to our attention. Um, like I said, we was there was a learning curve. You know, we wanted to make sure that, um, that uh, particularly the credit card wasn't abused. It has not been. Um, it may be time to, you know, review again what... Um, what the limits are, and what um, what the uh, per purchase or per transaction limit is going to be. I mean, so, so what happens now if they, they have a hundred ninety nine dollar thing they want to buy? They, they can do that. They and that's they, fine. So they contract with the vendor, and you cut them a check, or yes, okay. as long as they you know they have to approve the invoice so that they that I know that they receive the item, they're happy with the item. They still have to approve it, but then I just pay it and it doesn't go to the board. Right. For the credit card. And it's, if it's anything under $200 for a purchase order, too, they, or anything yeah, under $200, they, they don't need a purchase order. Either. Right. So so a vendor will bill me or it goes on the credit card, but they they can do it on their own for under $200. So, but if they need to buy something for 201 they do have to come to us for a purchase order. Yep. So. Um, and again, we, we also didn't have the same level of administrative support um, right. as we're sort of gearing up towards now um, that was approved in the last budget. So it's, it is, it's, um, it's something that we, we should be considering. Um, what we don't have to do it, but... Sorry, my, no, what, yeah. what sort of reporting capabilities do you have out of you know, you're using QuickBooks? We're still using, yes, we're using QuickBooks. Um, it, it, what, you're looking, what you're looking at in front of you, the budget, mm -hmm. um, is essentially I can get you that information not well formatted. Okay. Um, so you can at least get an idea of what the balances are online, on, on each line. They are not nice to look at, and they have a lot of lines with zeros for lines that were inactivated over time. Um, but there's no way to create a report without them, yes. Really? There's some things, so, you know, it takes VLOOKUPs and like that to get, you know, it takes a lot, some filtering and effort to get like a nicer looking readable report out of it. So, I echo the idea that I think it would be more efficient for everybody if the limit were upped, but I would caution you that until we have a bookkeeper in place, right. there's not a lot of time to do the kind of reporting yeah. that I, I would hope that you would want to balance so that. We're working towards that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I asked. I probably didn't hear what Caroline said, but when, when everyone stops talking, I just have a comment, so. Sure. Go ahead, Denise. Well, one of the things that is a real concern to me to increase this is, or to allow it to be higher, is that when we have times in our year when we have a cash flow problem, yep. and we need to be cautious of that. Also, we still have from some department heads who spend first and then turn in. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a concern for me. So increasing takes takes the um, increasing it takes the, the board doesn't get notified until after it's over with. And I, I have a concern for that for some spending. So that's my fifty cents worth. Like I said, we're not making the decision tonight, um, but as we um, get fully staffed, it's something that we need to be looking at again, I would suggest. So. You, you can also, when you, when you go over the policy, you can increase spending limits on certain lines and not on other lines if you think that some would be, you know, need more oversight than others. Right. Sure. You know, and there are certain items, too, that where a blanket purchase order makes sense. You know, electricity is electricity. Yeah, but that's not them doing that. That's us doing it. No, no, I know. But I'm just saying, when we're reviewing the purchasing policy, 
this is something else we should be looking at as well. So it's not yeah. just this. I mean, there are, there are other efficiencies. The bottom line of the budget isn't their concern. It's the Board of Elections' concern. Right. And also, at certain times of the year, when cash flow is low, we have to also kind of curb spending a little bit. And mm -hmm. if they have those abilities to do what they want to do, then that's, that's putting us at a risk. So, I'm, I mean, I'm certainly willing to talk about it when the time comes with the department heads and stuff, but I think we should be cautious. I think what they have works right now. And so they have to come in, they have to come in and get a sign to be out right, at this point. But right, well, I'm willing to listen. Okay. Well, well listen, we're not there yet, but these are some of the concerns that were expressed yep. by, um, by our department heads. Um, we also discussed um, having an employee recognition dinner. Uh, this is not something that the town has ever done before. Departments themselves have recognition dinners, but they never get together as town employees. I mean, the the um, there was a lot of discussion about the um, the training that happened last um, two weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, over uh, insurance training. I call it um, at the fire station. There was um, there was an appreciation by um, by the department members of having all the staff together and being able to have the one conversation and not just sort of being in their silos, um, which I thought was refreshing. I was happy to hear that. Yep. But we also don't recognize them as town employees. We we have uh, a police awards dinner. They have the fire department has one, um, the, and the highway and transportation don't at all. But um, we should be encouraging and, and recognizing our employees for a job well done. I would say on on a, a yearly basis. Um, so uh, the uh, department heads were um, very open to that idea. Um, Bob said in his 26 years as chief, he's never heard a select board member actually suggest doing that, which I find shocking, but whatever. Take him at his word. So, um, I don't know how you all feel about it, but you know, it would be um, I, either something like the police department now does like a spaghetti dinner. Uh, we could, um, uh, did Mark say they do a potluck maybe? Uh -huh. Or maybe they have it backwards, but um, it could be a potluck, it could be a spaghetti dinner, it could be something like that. And it wouldn't be um, a huge amount of money either. So, um, in fact, we could, might even be able to find the first year to get donations I mean, uh, of food. Or it can be a potluck, but that's what we want to do. But I think it's a, uh, a very, um, it's a nice way, and it's, it's a, uh, an easy way, I would say, for us to... Uh, do what we probably should have been doing all along and, and recognizing our employees for a job well done over the year. I think it's a great idea. Yep. All right, so I'd like to start working on it. I want. I was going to say maybe the first one could be um, at the end of June. Uh, before people disappear on, uh, on uh, family vacations for the summer or, or whatever they're doing for the summer and um, before we start in earnest on, on this year, on the coming year's budget. Because we're going to be doing that a lot earlier this year, apparently. So, if we, if we adopt the, guy, the, the, the schedule that the, uh, the budget committee sent us, um, which we'll, we'll talk about in a few minutes. But, I mean, at end of June, um, like I said, it's before people disappear for the summers, uh, for the summer, rather, um, on various vacations probably the last time before budget season that we, we have an opportunity to sit down with them. So, does that work for everyone? Or? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so I'll reach out to the department head, but um, I finally figured out how to get back on my phone. <laughs> I was wondering, though. I had to reset it, so it wasn't pretty. But I had a, a cloud backup. So, um, I'm assuming we would probably want to do it on a weekend, maybe, I'm guessing. Uh, so it's, um, so the, the, so the, so most of the employees can attend. Um, I cannot do it on the 22nd. I'm out of town that day, but the 29th. Is open. 
or the third or the twenty eighth or twenty ninth of June. I don't know if um, does. Do you have um, access to your calendar by any chance, Denise? I don't. Okay. All right. When do you? Um, well, I'm not going to ask you unfair questions because you don't have your calendar there, so I will not do it. All right. So can we pencil it in for the 29th? The last weekend in June. Yeah, the last Saturday in June. Yeah, I mean, I can certainly get back to that next week. It's, okay. You know, but yeah. If that doesn't work, then we can we can try yeah. to find another. Um, yeah. And we we want to discuss also. Do we want to? We want to open it. So obviously, it would be the employees and their families. I would say, you know, if they have a, a spouse or some sort of significant other that they want to bring, um, friend, I don't know, whatever they want to bring, um, and then obviously it would be the select board. Um, but we could open it up to like the you know the planning board could come or the budget committee could come, any of these other volunteer committees that are in town. I mean, it's, I would uh, envisioning something like at the Legion. And it's not, it's, I don't know, like 100 people or so. I mean, that's not that many people, right? You're probably going to have a hard time getting the Legion on a Saturday in June. In June? Yeah, like, I think that's probably, you're right. Like, you're Friday. Wedding season. Yeah. It's what now? Wedding season. It's, yeah, wedding season. Yeah. Wedding season. Yeah. I can, I can. Maybe, maybe one of the upstairs rooms, but. Maybe, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's also that, yeah. Yeah, can we check into it? Okay. Absolutely. All right. And if that won't work, then uh, I don't know, maybe in July. I mean, I, I, my hesitation of going any further into the summer, people disappear on vacation. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but we could do it earlier. I just I can't do it on the twenty second. I could do the twenty first. But so um, why don't I call the Legion and find out about the 29th, and if that okay. doesn't work, then I'll get some possible dates Perfect. from the Legion and bring yeah. them back to the board. Awesome. Okay. Does that work for everyone? Denise, did you hear that she's going to call, that, um, Caroline's going to call the Legion and see if it's open. If not, check for other dates. Okay. All right? Yep. All right. Uh, what else did we talk about there? Uh, joint training opportunities. There was interest um, in um, having more opportunities like they had um, with uh, Primex coming in to discuss. Um, insurance, um, defensive driving, that sort of stuff. Um, so they're looking for more opportunities like that. So as they come up, um, Caroline will pass them on to us and to them to see if there's interest. Um, but it seemed like the beginning of, um, of um, a positive conversation in the departments wanting to spend uh, uh, more time training with one another. It's po very positive. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing that we discussed, uh, we had postponed um, going down to the fire, st uh, the police station, to meet with uh, the officers, as we did with the members of the fire department um, a couple weeks ago. So the new date, if it works for everyone, um, it's because it's their training night, <laughs> which is a lot easier for us for us to go to them on one of their training nights than to try to herd that many uh, folks. There's only three of us, so it's a little easier, but. Uh, it was May 14th, which is a Tuesday night. Um, I check my own calendar, but it's the only night in May there isn't something. Well, all right, book it. Um, what, do we know what time their training starts? I don't. He didn't say, all so right. we should check. All right, so that's when the chief suggested we come down. Okay. So if that works for folks, I'll put it on my calendar right now, too. I'm going to put it in for 6 p.m., but I know it's not going to be 6. I think it's going to be 7, but we will conf Caroline will confirm. Uh -huh. All right. And we're going to be meeting downstairs at the RPG. And again, it would just be an informal discussion with them, just like we did with the fire department. Okay. Meeting between us and our employees. All right, I think it's almost in my calendar. Sorry, I just make sure I don't lose it. I'm at a disadvantage, but I can't always see. I think I put the address in there. Oh, I seem to take it. So, all right, um, and that's uh, that was. Uh, 
the crux of our conversation on uh, last Friday, uh, about an hour or so, and we're going to meet again in Jul July. The beginning of July. Beginning of July, the beginning of the new quarter. We have to come up with a date, but um, it will work for all the department heads. But seemed like the beginning of a, of, um, a fruitful conversation, I think. Good. So. Um, policy review, we have um, our three standing items, welfare, personnel, um, and purchasing. You've heard that there's a desire by the department heads to update the purchasing policy. Um, welfare, we're going to lead to you to direct us how you, what changes you think we might need to make. Okay. And um, personnel we will deal with after um, we'll table a couple table for months, yeah. We need to table it for a couple months until we... Uh, is all something else. So, all right, we are at town administration, board member activities. So, I'm going to go first. Uh, the budget committee met as organized last week, uh, last Wednesday, I guess it was. Uh, John Wardway was um, re elected chair. Uh, Suzanne Hewitt was elected vice chair. They have, um, as a committee, decided, voted to. Um, uh, fill the vacancy created by uh, Bill Irving's um, resignation by putting a call out uh, to the town uh, to get interested folks to uh, submit their names. Did that actually happen yet? Do we know? Um, the the went call out. went out. Okay. Yes, I All heard. right. I thought I saw it, but then I thought, did I see it? But, okay. Uh, so the email went out over via the town website, and we're to be post things. We should post something here. I believe uh, it is. Okay. All right. So we'll wait to hear back, or they will wait to hear back, and they will, um, they gave a two-week window um, as the names come in, or as an, at the deadline that the names come in after those two weeks. Um, I guess John or, or so someone will, will, will just... Uh, I, I am collecting all the letters of interest. They are, are due okay. by the 19th, which is the Friday before the meeting on the 24th. All right. Um, those people have been told in that public outreach message to be available on the 24th to be interviewed by the budget committee. Right. Um, the budget committee will get all of those letters of, in, of interest on the 19th, whatever comes in, right. um, and those people will come in on the 24th, and they'll, they said they intend to decide that night. Right. So did you hear that, Denise? You'll, on, the, on the 19th or the day after, you'll get a list of, um, of all the names and the letters of interest. To folks that wanted to, to to serve the remainder of that uh, that uh, for a year, I guess, um, and um, on the twenty fourth, uh, the budget committee you will um, will decide who will fill the vacancy. Okay. Okay. Um, also that evening, there was um, Suzanne had uh, prepared a schedule, a draft schedule of. Um, of uh, the budget committee's um, schedule for the yeah, coming yeah, year, yeah. which I thought was fabulous. Um, yeah. You'll notice that the, that it starts a lot earlier uh, than than this past year. Uh, yeah. They're <coughs> suggesting if this goes forward, and I have no objection to it, but uh, that um, the first um, presentations by departments will be on October 23rd, which means. <laughs> <laughs> the select board has to have their budget done by then. So yeah. we'll be starting um, the summer. Yeah. So uh, months before, um, I mean, at least a month before we, we, we started previously. The only other thing on here that I, I, I suggested Suzanne needs to change was uh, the, the setting of the deliberative session dates. That's uh, the prerogative of the select board and the school board. So I told her that I would imagine that the select board and the school board will work that out amongst themselves. Okay. And she said, yes, of course, I understand that. She just plugged in the, the first days, the, 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 the day that it had to be to start, the day that it had to be completed by. So yeah. obviously it's up to us to, uh, to plug in those dates. But other than that, I don't think uh, there was, oh, there was a suggestion or a question as to whether or not... Um, Uh, is it the 16th, and the, the third quarter numbers? Yes, that is a question. Whether or not um, Caroline can have that information prepared by them. How um, uh, she gets her staff, she might. Yeah, it's really, that's, that's really where it's at, to my mind. All right, so 
Uh, I would imagine then you'll be able to. Uh, we'll make I great hope. efforts and right. we'll hope the best and we should come close and it depends on staff. So that could be one, that could be one item that they, uh, that the, the budget committee and the select board may need to be flexible with. Well, just but just see that the following right. two lines down, the following right. week is is a is a presentation night. So, right. um, they I might understand. have to bump it into that or right. You know, but I'm saying that as you get closer to it, you'll um, you'll you'll know exactly where you stand. So. If they have to revise it, they have to revise it. But at least we have a yep. framework, and it's a good right. one. So I, I told them that I told the board, um, uh, committee rather, that I would bring it to us as to whether or not we would uh, would make uh, edits or, or or give our approval. I did not know, um, but it seems fine to me uh, based on what I believe to be well, their intention. So I mean, it, it makes it it's it's important that you know all these dates are set out so we don't miss deadlines. So I mean that was. An issue that Suzanne brought up um, during her presentation of these uh, that um, that the, um, the the last um, public hearing or the last sign off on um, or not getting it signed off on time um, would have jeopardized any um, bonds that we uh, we might have been proposing last year or this past year we weren't proposing any for this year so it gives a moot but. It's nice to have this all down, so we don't fall into that again. So I think it's helpful for everybody involved. So, so is there any objection to to sending this back to the budget committee, saying that we we approve? Yep. All right. Well, then, Denise, I would leave it to you to tell um, tell them that we we approve of uh, of the proposed schedule that they they sent us. Okay. All right. All righty. Uh, I don't think anything else happened at that meeting that... Um, no. The withdrawal committee representative. Oh, right, sorry, yes. Yeah. So, um, that's right. So, do we have a representative, too? I don't remember if they said we did. No. Like no. no. Okay. So, the uh, budget, uh, the um, SAU withdrawal committee that was um, authorized by, uh, by the voters in March, um, Joe Desch, who is a new member of the... Um, Budget committee volunteered to serve. Okay. So we say thank you to him. It was, yeah. uh, it almost came to fisticuffs. People were just jumping over each other trying to get on. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, uh, but nah, yeah. So <laughs> tongue in cheek, but uh, he he said he would be happy to do it. So we thanked, thanked him for that. So other member activities. I've uh, taken up all the. Mm -hmm. I don't have any this week. Um, when is our next stormwater meeting? The twenty fourth. Oh, that's also the twenty fourth. Yes. Okay. Is that going to create an issue? Um, I'm hoping that Denise will have budget committee in hand because I'll be at Stormwater since yeah, I had to meet that last one and that's got critical you, things going on. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be at Stormwater. Okay. All right. Denise, any updates for you? No. All right. Uh, we hope you're doing well. I am. Thank Good. you. Good. All right, review of correspondence. What do we have uh, it's in front of me? I will do it then. Dear, we have something from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Oh, yes. Um, this is uh, to notify us that um, the um, um, Regional Planning Commission has uh, contracted with uh, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation to collect uh, traffic volume data throughout the region, and we are on the list for um, Route 4 at um, Portland Avenue. It says at Main SL, what is that, State Line? Yeah, that's what that oh, looks like to All me. the way down there? To the bridge? I guess, yeah. Huh, all right, well, they're doing a tra traffic count there, I guess. So, just so we know, and uh, expect to see Stratford Regional Planning Commission employees wearing high visibility vests and using traffic uh, safety precautions wherever necessary, including traffic cones. Uh, there will be a rubber pneumatic tooth across all lanes of traffic with three inch steel nails anchoring them, basically counting the traffic. So if you see someone out there in a vest standing by the side of the road, that's why. All right. All right. We have a letter um, from um, law firm of Donahue.
Donahue, Tucker, and Chandela, uh, Concord Law Firm, um, regarding um, the uh, Public Service Company of New Hampshire, also known as Eversource. This is a um, lawsuit um, regarding um, utility poles and whether or not they're taxable property. The, the, the latest round of the lawsuit. So yes. We are a party to that suit. So um, that came electronically and I sent it along to the assessing firm to see if they wanted to comment to the board about how they feel about how this is going. Mm -hmm. We have been a party to the suit for decades, right? At least a, well, more than one, two decades at this point, I think. We're starting our second decade, I guess I should say. Um, Eversource doesn't believe that um, utility poles are um, taxable property and I don't know, a couple dozen towns in the state, including Rollins, or disagrees. So uh, it's just an update. It will be in the folder if you want to take a look at it. Don't take it right uh, we also have a letter from um, uh, Mr. David Scott of Dover, who is acting as um, um, counsel of some kind, advisor, um, to uh, a resident in regards to a matter before the Board of Tax and Land Appeal uh, regarding a, an abatement. Um, and this is this letter is to advise the BTLA board that agreement has been reached between Chad Rogarge of Avatar and David Scott representing Dr. J Terry Bennett to schedule a meeting between the two parties in this case within 60 days. Um, as the town of Rochester is represented by an experienced certified general real estate appraiser of the Avatar company, Dr. Bennett is represented by a former certified general appraiser, David Scott, now retired. We fully expect a settlement will be reached at the time to be held at the convenience of both parties. So basically they're, they're going to arbitration first before they have to go to the BTLA, is I guess is what they're trying to say in that letter. Right? Yes. Okay. It fell out of process because he missed his deadline. So he worked it out with Chad and, and BTLA said that he could have an extension. So that's just a notification that yeah. he's, he's worked it out with Chad. Yeah. All right, so we'll stay tuned to see what's going on with that. Um, ah, so the uh, the state has sent us our um, town road inventory collection form so to see if there's any changes, updates on um, on any of our roads that are listed. And so there were, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven different ones it looks like, um, discussing um, whether or not the roads are still listed as class six, if there's a new road, like Gagnon Hill Road, which is a private road, um, wouldn't have been on the previous inventory, right? I mean, this is not a yearly inventory, is it? I don't think. Um, actually, I believe it is. It is? Yeah. All right. So it didn't get changed before? No. All right, well, it's changed now, so, all right. And there are, um, oh, updating, you know, the, who the members of the select board are, that sort of stuff. That sort of thing, rather. That um, needs to get updated every year, who the road agent is, planning board chair, that sort of thing. So, we have that, and without any objection, I will sign that we've updated it. No objection. All right. And who's that from? The Department of Transportation. All right. All right, let's be in compliance with DOT. All right. Ah, a letter from my favorite, Xfinity. Uh, dear Chairman and members of the board, we are committed to keeping you and our customers informed about changes to Xfinity TV services. Accordingly, please note that as of May 2nd, 2019, the monthly rate for Acorn TV will change from $4.99 to $5.99 per month. The change is due to an increase in programming costs from Acorn TV. I don't know what Acorn TV is, but it's going to cost you a dollar more a month if you want it. So. That's British TV. Huh. Huh. Whatever. More power to you. Don't send all that stuff on, on TV as I know this, but we have... 
Oh, all right, so there's a letter also. Report of settlement meeting and order. That's the same, it's a more formal version of what you just read from, from Mr. Mr. Scott. Scott. They're going to mediate. Meetings. All right, so. What's the name of the group? Herview Ada et al. versus Town of Rollinshire. So this is the folks up on. Um, there's a list of the properties on the front page there. It's property tax advisors representing all of them. Up to the name of the organization of tax. Yes. Property tax advisors. Um, and their appeal to the Board of Land and Tax, BTLA. They are also going to arbitration before a formal That is the process. They have to do that. Right. Yeah. So they suggest the formal, the actual forms that exactly. we normally get. Okay. So, and the whole list of them. Right. Okay. And the other thing is the bookkeeper thing. We already approved that. So, Miles, do we have anything? Do we have a red folder tonight? We don't. No, there's no red folder. All right. So, Community input. Um, and Round two. Public oh yeah, that, that one. I see that. Um, seeing none. No, well, I have one. Yes. I didn't hear that the library director was at your department had meeting. Was she invited? She wasn't. Hmm? She was not. I didn't think about her. It was not intentional. The library is. Yes. Yeah, so, so next month or next quarter, rather, I will um, make sure that we invite her. It was not um, it was not intentional. All right. Any other public input? We okay. Seeing none, take a motion to go into non-public session to deal with welfare. I'll move we go into non-public session to deal with welfare. All right. I'll second that. Um, roll call. Denise. Here. Miles. Yes. Mike. Yes. We are non-public session to hear welfare petitions. And we're going to go home right after. So.